is a Rogers Sports presentation. Again, everybody, welcome to the Brampton Center for Sports and Family Entertainment. I'm Doug Anderson, along with Chad Dales. We'll be bringing you the home opener of the Brampton Battalion tonight against the Plymouth Whalers. And Chad, a very strong season last year for the Battalion, but they've lost a couple of players. They have lost a couple of players. It'll be interesting to see how they will fold out today against one of the more dominant teams of the OHL, the Plymouth Whalers. They've been a great team for a number of years now. But like I said, the Brampton Battalions, they lose five players. Their star player, Kleslow, now drafted by the Columbus Blue Jackets, a tourist then going to the Islanders. It's interesting to see who's going to step up. Guys like Jay McClement had a 30-goal season last year. These guys need to step up. A new identity. So here we go. A new season here in Brampton. Yeah, McClement, one of two players last year or in the battalion's history that have had 30 goals. Everyone knows Rafi Torres. Not a lot of people know Jay McClement looking for a big offensive season from here. But you know what? Kurt McSwain's the heart and soul of this team. He is a heart and soul of this club. And it's as well, we have a lot of draft picks this year. A lot of fans asking, like, what's this battalion team going to be like coming off a year where they, yes, they swept golf in the first round. They got beat by the best team in the league last year, regular yep. season, the Erie Otters in five games. An impressive season, nothing to be ashamed of. So a lot of expectations. Fans really want to improve. It'll be tough to see, but at the same time, anxious to see a new club. But last year is over and done with, and this is a whole new season. And we saw... Uh, last year, winning that first round of the playoffs and knocking off Guelph was a big deal for them. That getting by the next step. They've added five new players this year, everybody graduating to 16 to 17 year olds. Brad Topping's going to shoulder a big load in the net. Well, we spoke to the president before the game, and he was saying that Brad Topping is one of the biggest improvements during the offseason. The kid has gotten older, and yes, he's gotten bigger, and he has more experience. So when you look at a guy like Brad Topping coming into his second year with the Brampton Battalion, he's only going to get better. At the same time, he could lead this hockey club to get another successful season. Brad Topping in the net for the Brampton Battalion. Topping a 16-year-old last year, and when he played last year and filled in when the trade of David Chant went last year, and Finley came back, and Finley was not able to play right away due to a pulled groin, Topping stepped in between the pipes and promptly won Player of the Month in the OHL. He did last January. A great goaltender, only 17 years old in his second, second year, as I say, and he is now one of the leaders in this battalion team. Here we go, Doug. Paul Drew between the pipes for the Plymouth Whalers. Schwantz dumps it inside of the Plymouth end and our first stoppage of play of the game. Banner here with the battalion and one of them is head coach Stan Butler who has been with the club since day one. Exactly. I guess if you're gonna start anywhere, you start with the guy at the top. Couple of shots in front. Hughes goes for the second rebound. Rowan and Jarrett come together in the corner. Get the play a big roll. Yeah, Columbus is expecting this kid within the next five years to win a Norris Trophy. Turcotte with an opportunity. Harrison tries to stuff it in the glove side. Feeds it through the middle, and Schwantz has to return after it, chasing Stewart down. On the near side. Aaron Van Lusen ahead for Turcotte. Turcotte, good pass through the middle to Robinson. Right in on goal. Beautiful pass save from Drew. Shot from the point, Parent has it knocked away by Campbell. What a job by Campbell. Hughes gets it out to Rowan. Rowan's got speed to the outside. Let's the wrist shot go, Drew, no problem to steer that in the corner. And here's our first fight, it's Travis Parent and Cole Jarrett going toe to toe. Parent definitely was the entry there in the reach. So Cole Jarrett and Travis Perrin give the crowd something to cheer about. Throwing a few big rights. He fans on it, it goes into the corner. Campbell after it, Harrison right on top of him. McClement goes in the corner, hammers his man along the boards, and we're gonna have Jay McClement going off. McBride takes exception to that. Also coming in, 
And the fisticuffs continue along the boards. So McClemmon already going to the box. And we'll see how this shakes down with the final 55 seconds here in the first period of play. In his own net. Nifty play to get around Rowan as he bounces it back to the blue line. It's kept in. And finally comes away as Nisnas pokes it ahead for Smith. Smith has got a man in front all alone. He goes shelf. And it's a 1-0 lead as Tim Sacito puts it past Brad Topping for Plymouth's first goal of the game. And the man that started that whole play behind at the other end, great chance there, and the Plymouth Whalers make no mistake going upstairs, a great two-on-one action there. But Nistas, he started behind the net, deep in his own zone. He carried the puck out, made a great play, and the Whalers came down on a three-on-one, I should say, and go upstairs, and Brad Toppings really couldn't do much on that. Topping stacked the pads, but it was Cecito going over top for the first goal of the game. Great player, and here we go. Mike Smithler with the feed over to Tim Cecito, and yes, he put the puck right on the tape there, and basically all Cecito did was redirect the pass and go upstairs. Topping's trying to come over. Those will definitely be a one-two punch for the Whalers all season long. Here's Aaron Van Lusen on goal. There's the shot. And a big save coming from Paul Drew. Roby show back for Kaiser. Kaiser behind his own net. And right on top, Kreps feeds it out in front. Henrik shot. And that rolls along the top of the crossbar. Great opportunity for the check there to give Brampton's first goal of the game. Adam Henrik with three big opportunities and he's looking forward to a breakout season and he will get the opportunities another one in front of drew as he hangs on for the whistle flash takes hold keeps him to the outside and clayton clears it over for larue with an opportunity there's a shot he scores jonah larue looked like it was deflected by the defenseman as he blew it over the shoulder of paul drew to tie this game at one Great play there by the veteran himself, LaRue, and I think it was deflected. It appeared the puck came in like it was almost like a knuckle ball, and Paul Drew, he seemed like he was fooled, but it goes upstairs and over glove hand side. Jonah LaRue puts the first goal of the game here this afternoon. Five and a half to go here in the second period now, Doug, and we got a tie game at 1-1. So after being quiet for a period and two-thirds of this hockey game, the Brampton Battalion have tied this game at one and gives the hometown fans something to cheer about. Definitely. Poked away. Henrik after it with Jarrett. Henrik trying to feed it out in front. But Clement follows up. Centers it in front. Craps a shot. Open shot. They score! Adam Henrik makes it 2-1. to one. And suddenly the style of this game, Doug, has turned around completely. You had Plymouth with some chances midway through in the second, but suddenly Brampton has... They have woken up and they have now taken the lead 2-1 as we take a replay on that goal. And Adam Henrik picks up the rebound. I'll tell you something, Adam Henrik, that's his fourth opportunity, finally capitalizing. He had three big chances earlier in the game and he, I said it was only a matter of time before he popped one behind Paul Drew. Four big opportunities, Henrik finally successful, giving the Battalion a 2-1 lead. And the big thing that I'm noticing right now midway through the game is Brampton is using their size to advantage. McBride in the corner. McBride looking for Smith in front. Comes back, Stewart, he'll play it back in the corner for McBride, and there is the goal from Adam Henrik. Left alone, Henrik comes out of the corner, battles his way to the front of the net and has the open shot. Penalty. Some quick changes by the battalion there as they got sloppy and deep in their own zone. And here we Here's go behind a, the play. Another fight. Travis Parent. Parent and Shoot going toe to toe. Kyle Shoot and Travis Parent. This is Parent's second tussle of the evening. Travis Parent definitely. One of the bigger defensemen on this team. Size of the blue line, as we we're saying. Exactly what you're saying there, Doug, because that's the only way, it's the best way that you can teach a team. Kreps goes down, hit along the boards. Seen them since day one and game one. 
Here's a two-on-two -two break. Looking for Hughes all alone. Right in on goal to the backhand. Big bad save from Paul Drew. Robbing Brent Hughes right in front. What a pass. Hitting Hughes on the tape. Sending him in all alone. Very important. The battalion have been successful. In front, backhand shot. Topping grabs it and makes the save off Nistax. They've been successful throughout the game with the penalty killing. And the face off stepped up way outside Cole Jarrett. He was the one guy that I thought could maybe rip the shot and have an opportunity, their only chance maybe, but as you see, was offside and therefore the battalion escaped with the 2-1 win. Three, three, so a big 2-1 victory to kick off the home schedule for the Brampton Battalion. And Battalion, down by a goal, have turned this all around and came back with two quick goals from Jonah LaRue and Adam Henrik as they walk away with a big victory, a 2-1 victory here in the Brampton Center. And Chad, give me your thoughts on the third period of play before we go into a recap of the whole game. Well, I think the biggest thing, especially late in the game, was their maturity that a lot of these players displayed on the ice. A five-on-three opportunity late in the game for the Plymouth Whalers, and they, they killed off the penalty. Their penalty killing was very successful throughout the entire day. They had a major penalty. They killed off a little bit of time, but as well, they, play, they played heads-up hockey, and it appeared throughout the majority of the third period they were still quick, and Stan Butler has them clicking on all cylinders early on in the season. Absolutely. Absolutely. How shocked were you to see Turcotte taking a face-off in a five-on-three situation with time winding down in the third period of play? Well, if you asked me before the actual game, I guess I would have been surprised. But throughout the game, you have to give this kid the opportunity because he sh he displayed the confidence on yeah. the ice. And in my opinion, there's no reason why he should have been taking the power or the excuse me the face-off. And he certainly won his share of face-offs during the game. He was very successful taking face-offs. And I think that's got to be a pleasant surprise for Stan Butler. Well, his kid's got great hands. He's got great speed. He can pass the puck. He can put the puck in the net. I think Brampton fans are very excited, have very something to look forward to in the future. And that's Turcott being in the battalion lineup. What a great way to finish off a home opener. The battalion walk away with a 2-1 victory. We're going to come back with a little bit more here uh, from the Brampton Center. Stay with us for the battalion's home opener on OHL Primetime, live on Rogers Sports.